Hi, this is episode 48 of Crondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. Whether you've been programming for years or you're just learning how to code, it's natural to ask yourself, what does it take to become a great developer? I'm going to start off by saying that there's no right or wrong answer to this question. If you ask 100 experienced software engineers this question, you'll get 100 different responses. The reason why there's no clear-cut answer is because development is truly an art form. Therefore, asking this type of question about programming is similar to asking what makes a great artist. Even though the idea of becoming a great developer may seem like a daunting task, there is a practical process that you can follow in order to attain your goals. In preparation for this video, I asked various developers, read blog posts, and listened to a number of different podcasts that all talked about this topic. As you'd expect, the components of becoming a great programmer are pretty extensive. In this video, I want to give you an overview of the processes and requirements that I've found to be the most effective myself. The following are six traits that encapsulate the key characteristics found among great developers. I've also included some practical strategies for working with each of these attributes on a regular basis. The first is working through difficult features. Starting off with one of the most challenging traits, I found that the only way I improve as a developer is to work through challenging concepts. I find it disturbingly easy to fall into a routine where I only perform the same tasks again and again. I've been working as a developer for a number of years, and I have a nice arsenal of tools and features that I'm very comfortable building, but I've discovered that if I simply keep building features that I'm already comfortable creating, I won't grow. It's only when I bear down and dedicate myself to work through a difficult task that I've never performed before that I really become better. Having the requirement of working through difficult practice isn't a concept related solely to development. The book Peak researched peak performers in music, athletics, and essentially every other skilled profession. The results of the research showed that individuals only show improvement when they're working through challenging concepts. This means that if concert violinists played the same music day after day and never challenged themselves, their skills would just completely stagnate. The same concept holds true for developers. If you want to become a great coder, you need to work through difficult topics constantly. If you don't know where to start with finding challenging features to build, visit some of your favorite websites. You could look at Twitter or Airbnb or Pinterest. From there, you can compile a list of advanced features that you've never built before. Examples would be components such as infinite scrolling, asynchronous notifications, or multi-page authentication. Next on the list is community contribution. With the growth of the programming industry, the open source community has expanded exponentially. The popular languages and frameworks in the world, such as Python and Ruby, weren't created by corporations, but they were created by programmers interested in the common good and making everybody better. Depending on your level of experience, community contributions will vary pretty widely. If you're a senior level engineer, you could build an open source code library or build a feature for a programming language. However, even if you barely have any experience at all, you can still contribute. New developers can assist other individuals who are just starting to code. As great as it is to give back to the developer community, there's also significant benefits to contributing. If you're building a code library that other developers will see, you'll most likely be very careful to ensure that the code base is properly tested and functions properly. This type of development will make you an even better programmer and will help you in the long run. Third on the list is artistry. When it comes to development, it's easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day minutia of a project and forget that at its core, programming is truly an art. In order for code to be artistic, it must be elegant. And for it to be elegant, it must be simple. Some of the best projects I've worked for ended up having the most straightforward code bases. However, writing simple code is not as easy as you may think. Sandy Metz said this about simple code. Novice programmers don't yet have the skills to write simple code. Einstein said this about simplicity. If you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you don't understand it yourself. This may seem like an odd concept. 
However, if you've ever attempted to build a complex project that maintained an easy to follow code design, you know that it's true. The more you improve as a developer, the more straightforward your code should be. Fourth on the list is craftsmanship. Craftsmanship is closely related to artistry. However, there's an important distinction. When you're a craftsman, you truly take pride in your work. Through the years, I've met all kinds of developers, from programmers who simply treated each project like a widget on assembly line, to developers who made sure that every code file they worked on looked like a piece of art. Personally, I've found a cross between the two to be the most effective. Like many other concepts, craftsmanship is not isolated to programming. Growing up, my dad, who was a Major League Baseball player and is now a coach, always taught me to have what he called a spirit of excellence. This meant that no matter what I did or what I was working on, I had to take pride in it. He would tell me that if I was taking the time to perform a task, I might as well do it properly. While I feel that I take pride in my work, Craftsmanship is one of the concepts I struggle with the most. I find this principle challenging because it can be difficult to find the balance between well-written code and perfect code. As the saying goes, perfection is the enemy of great. Therefore, it's important to ensure that you work hard to properly design your code base. However, don't pressure yourself to achieve perfection. It's also important to have the mindset that no project is ever truly completed. This means that if you attempt to achieve perfection, you'll constantly be frustrated, mainly due to the fact that you'll never actually reach a stage where your code base will be completed. When it comes to craftsmanship, few have taken the same level of pride in their work as Steve Jobs. This is what he had to say about craftsmanship. When you're a carpenter making a beautiful chest of drawers, you're not going to use a piece of plywood on the back, even though it faces a wall and nobody will ever see it. You'll know it's there, so you're going to use a beautiful piece of wood on the back. For you to sleep well at night, the aesthetic, the quality, has to be carried all the way through. Next on the list is adapting to change. If you've worked on any real code projects, you can attest that there's one true constant, and that's change. Great developers set themselves apart from novices by how they adjust to changing requirements for an application. There are two main ways that new coders struggle with change. One, they have no flexibility with their code design. This means that when a new requirement is added to the project, they'll need to completely reconfigure the code in order to allow for the additional functionality. Sometimes it means they have to start from scratch. Second, they plan for the wrong feature. A developer may have developed a mental model of what the end project's gonna look like. However, the estimation rarely matches reality. Imagine that you're building an accounting application and you think the client's going to eventually ask for a system to be completely project-based. You will make design decisions based on the workflow hierarchy that you have in mind and everything will go into what you have in your mind as the end result. However, if you're wrong, you'll be forced to reconfigure the entire app. Both of these pitfalls are normal to come across on your coding journey. However, a great developer finds a balance between no design and premature design. By building well-constructed code bases, the great programmer writes modules that have flexible interfaces that it can adapt to change. They also understand that project requirements change and that the code they write has low coupling. This means that changes to one feature in the application that should have little to no impact on other parts of the program. For example, back with our accounting example, if a change is required to the payroll module, it shouldn't require you to rewrite the personnel management feature. Last on the list is tireless learning. One of the most important factors in reaching your development goals is having a thirst for knowledge. Thankfully, you have 100% control over this requirement. Regardless of how much experience you have as a programmer, you won't ever reach a stage where you should stop learning. There will always be improved processes, new frameworks, and new languages to learn. I've asked some senior developers I work with how they organize their learning methods. They gave me the following recommendations. One, learn a new framework or language each year. 
This should also mean that you're building a production application during the year. It's easy to follow tutorials and build hello world type applications. However, when you create a real program, you'll be forced to work through challenging constructs. Second, read multiple books daily. I personally have over a dozen books I read every single day related to development. In fact, many of the topics I discuss on this show come out of what I'm reading during a particular week. Third, follow advanced tutorials. Many of the developers I work with admitted they prefer to learn new coding techniques by reading blogs or watching videos from other programmers. There are a number of guides available online you can go through that will teach you how to build advanced features into your applications. Fourth, subscribe to newsletters. I subscribe to a number of newsletters that are sent to me each week. This includes newsletters on Ruby, Rails, and JavaScript. These type of newsletters are a great way to stay up to date with changes in a language or a framework. They curate some of the best blog posts, and they also have some great tutorials from around the web. I hope that this has been a helpful guide and will help you answer the question of what does it take to become a great programmer for yourself.